Okay, good morning. It's a great honor and great pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, as Milan said, uh, it's also great pleasure because, as he said, uh, Yarana was uh, my uh, teacher in the beginning when I started uh, to study uh, sociology and social policy, and then we have become very close friends, and actually he made me to follow the path uh, of education, education policy. So it's, uh, <laughs> I think that uh, I will devote this uh, lecture or keynote to Yarda, if you don't mind. But obviously I hope that you will enjoy it too. And uh, when I was asked to give, to give this lecture, uh, I was very quick about deciding uh, about the, the topic because, uh, and I uh, decided uh, uh, to talk about the concept, uh, not only concept, but also the practice of a middle layer, so-called middle layer, middle tier, because I think that it's one of the most discussed uh, topic or issue uh, currently not only here in the Czech Republic, as you will hear in a moment, but also in many other countries. So, uh, in the first part, I will uh, uh, explain what is and what is not uh, supposed to be and understood as a middle layer in education policy. And I will very briefly review the literature and liter theory, and will show the different possible meanings uh, of the concept of middle tier. Uh, I will also try to explain why the concept uh, is so popular in many countries today. In the second part uh, of my talk, I will focus on the current situation on the Czech Republic uh, uh, and our effort here to introduce uh, the middle layer here in practice. Actually, not introduce, but I would say reintroduce. Uh, I will focus on the reasons why the middle layer is planned to be uh, established, actually, it's, uh, we are just in a phase of piloting uh, the middle layer. And uh, I will also show some preliminary results uh, and experience with uh, piloting the introduction of middle layer. Some of the data I will present today are quite uh, new and nobody actually still heard it. So we will be the first who will, who will, uh, be, who will have a chance to, to see it and hear it. Okay. So, I will start uh, with the concept. Uh, uh, I apologize, it will be a bit boring, it's more theoretical, but I think that, uh, you know, I'm from academia, so we should start with some sort of theory, some, some background. Uh, if you go through the literature, you'll find different labels referring to the same idea, to the same or very similar uh, idea and concept. Some people or scholars uh, use the term middle tier, Others prefer middle layer or meso level, middle level. And in our strategy of 30, uh, uh, of in strategy of education 2030 plus of the Czech Republic, uh, it was translated uh, as a middle point of support. I think it was not uh, the correct uh, translation, but still we can, you can find this uh, translation. Uh, regardless of the label, uh, the concepts refers uh, to the structure of educational governance uh, that is located between individual schools on the one hand and the uh, center, usually the Minister of Education, on the other hand. Well, certainly we need a much more precise definition and understanding what the middle layer is. I think that it's quite vague to say that it's something between schools and the ministry. Uh, but if you consult academic literature, you would be even more puzzled what you find there. Uh, you will be puzzled by different conceptualization and understanding of middle layer. Uh, I did some search and I was able to distinguish uh, four different meanings and quite different meanings of middle layer. Uh, first, uh, sometimes uh, the middle layer is understood as a simple as a loose network of local actors, of many local actors. So very vague definition. It's something, some set of networks, some, some network of various networks, of various actors. Second, somehow, sometimes it's uh, understood as a more structured and coordinated and interacting system of actors. There is supposed to be more structure, but still there is uh, supposed to be many actors at the middle level. Third understanding of the, of the concept is, is that uh, 
it's uh, an organized set of several core local organizations. So not many actors, not many institutional organizations, but just a few organizations placed in the middle, usually municipalities or regions. So there is some core of the middle there. And the fourth understanding is the, I would say the, the narrowest, uh, uh, is that uh, middle concept, middle layer is understood as a regional public administration institution. So you will be, if you go through the literature, you will find all these different meanings. Okay, obviously uh, the terms like middle layer or middle team uh, are the abstract ones. In practice, middle tier have uh, different and specific labels and you are here from quite different countries. So uh, you definitely, I guess that you are not referring uh, in your country to middle layer, middle tier, but we are using uh, concepts like school district, local educational authority, municipalities, regions, etc. So uh, usually the middle layer, middle, middle tier is an abstract uh, academic term, not very common uh, in, in practice. And of course, here we come to the problem that we will discuss in a moment, uh, that the space between the schools and the center government is quite huge. And the middle layer can mean and does mean quite different things in different countries. Well, to complicate things even further, uh, in various countries, in many countries, you will find different bodies that can be understood as a middle layer. For instance, here in the Czech Republic, we have uh, both municipalities, we have regions, and both are active in education policy and educational governance, and both have uh, their tasks and responsibilities. And so both regions and municipalities can be understood as a middle layer. So actually, we don't have a one middle tier, we have two, at least two, that uh, two organizations or institutions that can be called and understood as a middle layer. Well, of course, this uh, crucially complicates uh, the research and understanding on the middle layer because uh, most of the research is obviously not abstract. It's not abstract on middle tier, middle layer. Uh, it's uh, concrete empirical research on local educational authorities, on school districts in Canada and in the US and so on. So uh, it complicates the uh, understanding of what the middle layer actually does how, it's, how it is effective, and so on. Uh, but uh, it's problematic uh, for comparing the experience of various countries because uh, the task and emplacement in educational governance, for instance, of school districts, as we know them from the US or from Canada, is obviously very different from the task and uh, uh, responsibilities of municipalities or towns in Europe. So although in theory, both school districts in Canada would be called and understood as a middle layer, middle, uh, uh, middle tier and municipalities here in Europe, uh, uh, so to compare them is quite problematic. And still, somehow we should do it because if we want to know something, to have some empirical evidence on effectiveness uh, of middle tier, we should compare it somehow. So perhaps uh, it might be useful to work uh, with certain typologies or of basic models, uh, some ideal types of military. Uh, needless to say, it's quite complicated because uh, you will find as many middle tiers and as many middle layers as uh, there are different educational systems. But still, uh, I think that we can, if we simplify it, uh, we can distinguish at least three most common types of uh, middle layers uh, or middle tier. First type um, uh, in countries like Australia, China, Singapore. Uh, in these countries, uh, middle tier is a middle component of the state public administration. So, uh, and by the way also, it was the case of the Czech Republic in the 1990s up to uh, 2000. It was the case when we had uh, here the so-called school offices. So school offices were the uh, part of the state public administration. So it's the first idle time, so, so prototype of uh, middle tier in practice. Uh, the, probably the most common, as we know it, uh, from continent, especially continent Europe, uh, 
are municipalities, town and districts that uh, are responsible for education, uh, founding basic schools, uh, secondary schools and so on. So it's a second prototype of a model of middle tier. And uh, the third type uh, is uh, middle tier as a school districts as we know them from countries like, especially from Anglo-Saxon countries like Canada or, or the US. So, but if you go to, if you really ask people from different countries, and I'm <laughs> uh, quite sure that you know it from your experience, uh, the different models are, you know, quite much more complicated than this uh, simplified uh, typology. But still, I think it can be helpful. Uh, it can be useful for some some discussion. Okay. Uh, Despite all these differences in uh, concept and practice, it's surprising uh, how popular middle tier or middle layer has become in the recent year. Uh, I gather that, uh, and I think that uh, <clears throat> many of you, or perhaps most of you, are familiar with the concept uh, of leading in the middle or leading from the middle. Uh, the concept developed by authors like Michael Fullan. Uh, <clears throat> Michael Barber and or Andy Hargreaves and although their understanding of middle layer uh, can differ in detail and differ in detail uh, the common denominator of their understanding uh, of their understanding of uh, middle layer is that uh, they take the middle layer quite positively and they argue that uh, the middle layer can and should play quite important role in educational governance. Natural question then is why the concept has become so popular. Well, it may be argued and my first argument, my first understanding would be that it's because uh, it's a reaction uh, the leading or the concept, or I would say the philosophy rather, it's not theory, I would not call it theory, I think it's more philosophy. Some, would, uh, some critic would say ideology, but I would say philosophy. The leading from the middle uh, is a reaction to the problems with the main, the most common approaches to education governance. From the hierarchical, top, uh, from top to the down, top-down approaches on the one hand and bottom-up approaches on the other hand. So the leading from the middle is a reaction to both uh, these approaches that are found by many as unsatisfactory. On the other hand, uh, the top-down approaches are considered to be too bureaucratic, ineffective, inefficient. And on the other hand, the bottom-up approaches are sometimes criticized to be inefficient and ineffective in a way that they are not able to spread uh, the innovative schools to the, uh, beyond the, some small area. So I think it can be one explanation of why the concept uh, of military is so popular nowadays. But uh, and nevertheless, uh, the current popularity of the concept is still quite uh, and sort of surprising uh, because if you go back to the recent history, you will be surprised that the middle level, uh, for instance, the school districts in the US or also in Canada, were understood as insignificant or even as undesirable element in educational governance. Uh, for many people and many scholars and authors and also people from practice uh, in 1980s, 1990s, uh, what only matters were teachers and schools, while other actors were taken as bureaucratic burden. Uh, here is one exemplary citation from uh, 1990s. The school is the vital delivery system. The state is the policy setter and chief paymaster and nothing in between is very important. So, of course, there were some supporters also of middle tier also in the uh, 1980s, 1990s, but if you go through the literature, the general understanding was, well, of course, the most important are students, parents, teachers, principals, and schools. It's the 
particularly what's, what matters in education. And of course, we have some center for policy direction, but nothing in between is very important. So just, uh, I think it's uh, quite, you know, uh, interesting to remind us uh, because uh, uh, if I go to very places, I think that uh, some people are very amazed by the concept of middle So just to remind us that uh, it was not always the case. Okay. So again, uh, one explanation is uh, that it's a reaction to the, uh, the not satisfactory functioning of the top-down and bottom-up approaches. And another explanation of this uh, current popularity of the concept can be that it's a swing of moods. And uh, in all policy ideas, in public policy, you will always find the, the changes from centralization to decentralization and back uh, so different ideas have their ups and downs and and if uh, if i'm going older and older i understand uh, <laughs> i've already and many of you probably also uh, have uh, realized that uh, in various decades we'll find different you know popular concepts and it's it's changing so perhaps it's uh, it's one uh, explanation why it is uh, so popular uh, but uh, perhaps uh, there is also something real behind behind this perhaps uh, the middle tier has some merit perhaps there is some evidence that it can be it can be useful uh, in the educational governance system so and it, it has been argued for some authors like andy Hargis or some others that uh, it's a new conception it's not a pendulum of swings uh, or swing of moods but it's a really new idea well so what's the evidence what we know is actually function is working or not uh, well uh, in for instance in a very influential report uh, by McKinsey company uh, based on research of principle of the best world educational system you will find this interesting passage uh, what we did not anticipate was the critical role that the mediating layer plays between school delivery and the center. It was the very influential report based really on the review of the best functioning uh, in terms of academic achievement, I would, I would say, uh, school systems around the world. So, and uh, they were surprised, the authors, that the middle layer, middle layer is so important there. Uh, middle layer was argued to provide targeted support to schools and monitor compliance. It was argued that it's, uh, it plays a very positive role in facilitating communication between schools and the center, encouraging inter-school cooperation, and in buffering community uh, resistance to change. Uh, well, so do we have some other evidence? That's a question. Uh, it should be admitted, uh, and as I said, I'm from academia, so I'm <laughs> critical and I always uh, asking and looking for some other evidence and if you look for evidence on effectiveness of uh, school districts uh, or middle tier uh, the um, you must say that uh, the, emper uh, the empirical evidence is scarce uh, there is much normative research on uh, not research but not much normative uh, literature on middle tier but if you ask what we actually know uh, well it's quite a few uh, studies on that. Well, there is some limited empirical evidence from the school district research, mostly from the US or Canada, showing the, that schools districts differ profoundly in terms of educational effectiveness. Uh, however, the factors behind this uh, effectiveness is, are relatively unclear. Uh, but there is some evidence, some interesting uh, evidence, but I should say again that it's limited uh, and restricted to countries like the US, Canada, Australia, and some other countries. Uh, but the, the limited evidence suggests that factors like creating a broadly shared vision, vision and goals for students, providing coherent instructional guidance and deliberate use of evidence can have positive effect. So what we definitely know is that school districts or the middle layer in general, in abstract terms, uh, really differ in terms of their effectiveness. What is not so clear is the factors that cause this different level of effectiveness. Okay, to sum it up, uh, 
we should say that uh, there are some good reasons to believe that middle tier can have quite or even very positive role in student learning. Nevertheless, we should be quite cautious in my view, it's my interpretation of the findings, in quite cautious in interpreting the role of middle tier. Uh, middle tier certainly is not panacea for solving all educational problems. Well, perhaps it's quite clear and to our uh, surprise why I'm saying this, but uh, if you'd be in this current climate here, uh, I think that's, uh, it's not the, the most common word you would hear here. So, the establishment of middle tier uh, in itself is not a solution. So, I often, I often say that, and I like to say that middle tier is not a goal, but a means. It's a means uh, for, uh, if it's implemented properly, it can play a quite interesting and quite positive role. But for many, uh, for many policy makers, I think uh, they take it uh, as a goal in itself. And I think it's a false strategy to believe that simply introduction of the middle tier will solve the problems. I think it's a wrong comprehension of the role of middle tier. Okay, so, and also uh, what is known about this that uh, the nature of implementation of military is quite crucial and critical, meaning that uh, the military, as I s suggested, can play quite positive role, but also it can be a bureaucratic, bureaucratic burden, and it doesn't have to be so positive uh, in their effects. Uh, what is known from the research, and also <laughs> it's quite understandable from practice, is that uh, the crucial role plays uh, play trust, trustworthiness and trust, uh, between the people in the middle area and people in schools. So uh, trust is a very crucial factor uh, that uh, is you know, influencing, determining whether it will work or doesn't, or will not. Okay, so it was for the first part. And now we will move to the more practical part of the presentation, and it's uh, our current experience with the middle tier uh, of education here in the Czech Republic. Uh, <clears throat> well, I said that uh, it's a uh, sort of introduction that we are in the face of trying to introduce a middle tier here in the Czech Republic, but I should say that it's a uh, more reintroduction re uh, of the middle tier here in the, Czech, in the Czech Republic. Because, as I already said, uh, we had a middle tier in the 19, uh, 1990s. Uh, paradoxically enough, we had, uh, and it was a uh, middle tier, was uh, uh, part of the state public administration. Paradoxically enough, it was uh, in the years of the most liberal years uh, here in, in our history, I would say, of, the, of this country, we had a middle tier that was part of state public administration. So it's a, it's a sort of paradox. But anyway, uh, the interaction of middle tier was suggested and was planned uh, in the newly adopted and accepted strategy of uh, education policy uh, up to 2030 plus, as it is called. And as it is um, said in the strategy, it's supposed to provide targeted support to schools, ensure the coordination on their activities in the locality, and becomes an intermediary uh, in communication between the center and the districts. Well, uh, <laughs> if you go through the uh, strategy, you will, you will see that uh, it's supposed to have a quite a few tasks that is supposed to, to fulfill, perhaps uh, I could say too many tasks. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to read it, <laughs> uh, just to pick uh, some of the tasks. Uh, for instance, it's supposed to uh, provide uh, direct methodological support uh, to promote uh, mutual cooperation, communication. Uh, it's uh, supposed to provide legal advice on education, support positive innovation at schools uh, in the area, and so on. So many tasks were proposed uh, for the middle tier to fulfill. Actually, I was, you know, sort of in the center of the discussion about middle tier uh, and about the strategy, and I can say that uh, on the one hand, I was quite surprised how many people, and actually how strong consensus on middle tier was uh, 
uh, that the military is positive uh, thing that should be introduced, but uh, definitely for different people it meant quite different things. And this is uh, <laughs> uh, this is uh, what follow that uh, it's supposed to have so many different tasks, and definitely I'm sure that uh, it cannot fulfill all the tasks that are supposed to that is supposed to uh, to have. But anyway, so it's a uh, very recent history how it. Uh, how it was planned, and uh, as I said, uh, uh, well, I should before I will say something about the pilot. I should also explain the rationale behind piloting and reintroduction of the military. Uh, the arguments for the re-establishment of military are quite clear, and as I said, uh, military is not a new idea here in the country. So. Uh, we have gone through different phases of education governance. We had quite central uh, educational policy, of course, during the communist era. Then we, although we had a liberal 1990s, still, paradoxically, as I said, uh, the middle tier called school offices was part of uh, state public administration. And uh, so it's a... Uh, uh, the school offices uh, have been abolished. Have been abolished in 2000s, not because they were supposed to be ineffective. Although I'm not saying that they were always taken that positively, but they were not abolished because uh, people from education decided it should be abolished. They were abolished as a part of the much uh, more complex administration reform. So it was sort of byproduct of reform. It was not uh, aimed to abolish the, the basic and the main aim was not to abolish school offices, but was to restructure public administration. Well, they had a number of tasks and responsibilities, both administrative and supportive, and they were responsible for a number of schools in a given districts. We, at the moment, we had uh, then in the history, we had in 1990s, we had the uh, districts. Uh, we didn't have regions. Actually, we have, but uh, they, don't, they didn't have that, uh, that role. Uh, so we had about 76 districts, and they were abolished, and with them also the school's offices were abolished. Uh, after the reform in 2000, all basic schools continued to be founded by municipalities. It didn't change, but all of them were given, actually were forced, I would say, the schools were forced uh, to have legal autonomy and got a lot of new responsibilities without appropriate support. So it created extremely decentralized and extremely fragmented system, educational system. And uh, I can say that uh, I would argue that our system, and I will show you in a moment, is one of the most decentralized and most fragmented in the world, actually. Uh, of course, the problem is not autonomy. The problem is not autonomy, it's a great idea. Uh, the problem is uh, the low level of support to schools. So it's the other side of the autonomy. Okay, uh, let me document it on some numbers and graphs. Uh, as I said, uh, in the Czech Republic, as most of you know, uh, schools, uh, basic schools are founded by municipalities and secondary schools by regions. We now have more than 4,000 basic schools, and more than one quarter of them have less than 50 students. We have 14 regions, but we have 6,200 municipalities and towns, while out of these uh, uh, 6,000 uh, municipalities, more than 2,500 uh, found at least one basic school, meaning that we have an uh, enormous number of uh, founders of schools, mostly small municipalities. In other words, in our system we have a number of small schools founded by very small founders, quite often, and uh, it's not then surprising that uh, these small municipalities do not have any capacity to support schools. They are happy if they are able to ensure the basic necessities of the schools, but definitely they don't have any capacity, any energy, any potential to lead the schools in terms of education pedagogy. As you can see on the following graph, uh, the Czech schools have 
together with the Netherlands, uh, highest autonomy in OECD countries. And the system is really extremely fragmented, as I said. And as, also, as I also said, uh, the most visible negative consequences that school principals, school principals mostly in small schools, are founded by small municipalities, do not have any time for pedagogical leadership. Uh, it's also quite known, I don't have any table or graph for it, but we know that uh, from other research that our principals really do not have any time for the pedagog pedagogical work. Uh, they spend most of their time on administration and technical tasks that are not related to supporting and teaching uh, uh, and leading teachers. Well, the problem is that some services, some support for schools uh, are effective and efficient only if the capacities are concentrated. I'm not saying I'm not an advocate of some central government uh, as such, uh, but definitely in terms of economy of scale, it's some, ser some services have uh, meaning only if they are concentrated, not if they are fragmented meaning that they are provided for a set of schools. Uh, one example is leading uh, is legal advice. It doesn't make sense to have uh, independent legal advice for 2,500 uh, 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 you know, founders of schools because the legal advice should be one for all schools because we have one legal system. And still, in reality, we have different you know, ways how the school get a legal advice. It doesn't make sense. It's very ineffective, very inefficient, and schools often complain about that. It's uh, similar also for methodological support for teachers because we don't have 2,500 excellent <coughs> methodological experts on, on, on pedagogy uh, that uh, all founders of schools can, can afford to have. So uh, I should also say that uh, it's not that uh, simple the picture because uh, we definitely have also some bigger municipalities we have towns uh, we have that are founding uh, more than about 20 schools and some of them actually were able to create some support for schools but the result is clear uh, there is uh, extreme difference among schools in terms of their access to resources some schools located in the big towns uh, with that have some sort of middle layer, actually, some big towns were able to really, uh, you know, to have some big office with uh, good support for the schools, for 20, 30 schools, but many other schools, most of the schools do not have any support. And it's one of the factor that causes uh, one very <laughs> unhappy thing about our education system in its, and it is, uh, the great difference in academic, academic achievement among schools. Although, uh, in general, our society, our country, is quite homogeneous in terms of social disparities. If you, if you compare income, we are quite relatively homogeneous countries. There are, we don't have that much social disparities. Uh, if you compare the differences in academic achievement among regions, among districts, uh, among schools, you will find, you will be surprised that uh, we have such a big differences. And I would argue that one of the factors that uh, causes these differences uh, is uh, the different uh, access to resources and support for different types of schools. Okay, so a few words about the pilot. Uh, I should say that I'm not a member of uh, the pilot team, so what I know is uh, from the people from ministry. So it can be a sort of biased <laughs> understanding uh, because I have information. I have, of course, I have uh, consulted people in the terrain, but still uh, uh, I will present more the ministerial picture. So if there is anybody from, you know, from the regions, I would be very happy to, to hear some more critical understanding and think of the situation. And also the, the following presentation of slides, presentation slides are from the ministerial, uh, ministerial presentation. But still, as I said, it's, it's not just that they are able to pretend something that is not actually real. Well, so the pilot of Militeer um, uh, is planned uh, to, to be realized in two years in two regions. 
uh, assembly and Svitavi. It focuses upon kindergarten and basic schools and it consists of a center ministerial team located here in Prague and regional teams in those two districts. It has uh, three main groups of activities. I have deliberately left it in, in Czech, I will translate it. Uh, the first group activities is based on communication on both from the center to the region and from the regions to the center. So the first bulk of activities and first bulk of the task is based on communication. Uh, the second group of activities concentrates on very concrete and targeted support for schools and municipalities. And in my understanding, what I have seen, what I have heard is the crucial, crucial, uh, crucial role what they actually do nowadays. They try to provide really targeted support to schools. Uh, to, exp to help with the actual real problems like the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, with uh, Ukraine uh, migrants going to schools. So actually it's a main, main task of the pilot and I think it's a very good strategy because they try to build the trust and they know that they will build trust only if they are able to provide really come some concrete help, not some abstract uh, academic help. <laughs> uh, some networking advice, but some something that is really real. So the schools are, you know, con uh, contacting uh, the people from the pilot and asking, okay, we have this very practical problem here in our school. For instance, we have a problem with this teacher. We don't have a math teacher. We have this IT management problem. We have this, uh, you know, behavior issues and so on. So the and the people from the pilot are prepared to help to help. At, and if they are not able to help uh, themselves, which is usually often the case, obviously, they are able to find the help somewhere else. So I think that the, 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 one of the most you know, important part of the, of the, of the pilot and the military. And um, the third bulk activities is on cooperating, mediating cooperation in the region, putting schools and lead, leaders and principals together in a particular district. Okay, so I should say that uh, so far the evidence and experience, uh, what I have heard, and again I am saying <laughs> what I have heard, what I have seen, is quite encouraging and positive. So uh, there is also some, you know, some examinations, evaluation, uh, some external evaluation. I'm not going to read it. It's in Czech. I'm, it's again, it's from the ministerial uh, presentation. But I think it, it can be, it can be trusted. Uh, uh, so the founders, municipal, both municipalities and also the principals are quite positive about the pilot. What I know uh, from the informal talks with the people is that in the beginning it was sort of, well, what uh, you are able, you are from the ministry, you are not able to you know, f uh, help us in the, in the last uh, tw uh, 20 years, so uh, what, uh, what, uh, what we can expect from you. But uh, I think that they were able in many cases really to get a trust in just a very short period of time. Uh, and they were mostly satisfied with the communication and as I said also with the concrete help. Well. Uh, nevertheless, and I'm going to the end of the presentation, nevertheless, despite uh, the positive preliminary, uh, preliminary findings, uh, we should, in my opinion, resist uh, to be over-optimistic. Uh, I'm not over-optimistic uh, uh, despite all these findings and which, which, that, that are quite uh, encouraging. Uh, because in my view, the positive results, and they are really encouraging, of the pilot are mostly due to exceptional people that realize the pilot. Uh, the pilot succeeded to attract excellent and highly motivated people. Uh, very of them were, much of them, many of them, I don't know how many, uh, were the formal established principles uh, in the region. So experienced principals who decided, okay, I've been, you know, leading principal in the region for 10 years, so it's a good chance to, to move on and to go to, you know, to share the experience. So many of them were former established and, uh, you know, <laughs> experienced experience principals. So that they're trusted in the region. So, but they are exceptional people. And also it's uh, the pilot, I can say, is led by really 
uh, exceptional woman uh, that started also in the terrain, then moved to ministry. So she, you know, is both is she is able to, you know, able to really compare to understand both school needs, the municipalities and the ministerial needs. But uh, how many people we have uh, <laughs> in the system, such as uh, Martina Beťáková? So, so I think that the one problem is uh, the scaling up uh, of this pilot uh, to the whole country. Uh, there are some several potential problems that are other than the scaling up uh, is that uh, it's quite source intensive. Uh, and as we all know, we are currently in times when cuts rather than increase in public spendings can be expected in the, in the following years, unfortunately. But I don't think it's not good time for the pilot, uh, not, good, not, uh, time, not good time for introducing a new military or reintroducing military uh, in the Czech Republic again, because uh, we have a more or less right-wing government and, uh, and sort of, you know, the strategy of the government is to reduce the public spending and also a number of public officials. So it's not a good time <laughs> for, you know, scaling up the pilot. Uh, another concern relates to possible bureaucratization of the process. It's one thing to manage a small team of highly motivated, highly experienced people, uh, and it's quite different to you know manage uh, several hundred uh, people that are not so motivated. And as I said, it's not easy to find so many motivated, experienced, uh, experienced people in uh, in, the, in reality. Uh, but probably uh, the most difficult problem relates uh, to the fact that uh, not only different schools but also different uh, districts have different needs. As I said, uh, uh, the reality and uh, the Czech Republic is not homogeneous. Uh, and we know and we know for sure that the different uh, regions have different uh, uh, different requirements, then they, they, they have different needs, they need something different. It's something different to, to create a middle tier in a big town like Pilsen, Prague, Ostrava, uh, with a already established, sort of established middle tier. And, uh, and I think that we don't need probably the middle tier to, to build the middle tier in these big municipalities. And also we have regions that play quite an important role that sort of, you know, uh, they were able to create and uh, sort of small school offices uh, and to help at least uh, in some in some regions. So I think it is the most uh, you know difficult question and most difficult issue uh, to to be tackled in reality. How to deal with the different uh, different demand, different needs of different regions? Because I don't believe in one uh, strategy for the for the whole country. So it's a big challenge. Uh, not surprisingly, the discussion on military is still open to debate and in my view uh, there are uh, clear agreement and disagreements in current dis discussion. Uh, as for the agreements, uh, as I said, I was really surprised about the strong consensus in our uh, educational community because uh, in other issues like you know the content of education, we are strongly divided. You know you would you find a really uh, extremely divided you know actors uh, in education policy. But in terms of educational governance, I was really surprised and shocked. I, I can say when we started with the idea, just you know just just in one conference, how many supporters of the idea you know uh, show up and uh, say, well, it it can be a good idea. So and the reason, as I said, is that. Uh, there is consensus that the system is too fragmented and the support, at least for some schools, is needed. Uh, we know that there are many schools and many principals who get little or no support. And I think that is consensus that we need to do something about it. What is not clear is the how to do it. <laughs> uh, and whether the middle tier is the answer, and if it's answer, how it can be implemented in reality. Well, one question is uh, whether military should be the uh, military of support or whether it should, be it, whether it should have some executive uh, role. Well, my general understanding and my general advice was uh, to start with the 
military as a support, supportive institution. Because in my understanding, uh, first, the military must prove that they are able to help, they are able to support the schools, and only if they are able to persuade the schools that they are really useful, they are able to help, and they are you know, positive actors in general in the system, then they can have some executive roles. But uh, there, is still debate, there is still much debate, because some would argue that uh, if they have uh, some real effect upon education, they also, the middle tier, the school offices, or however we will call it, should have also some executive power. For instance, they, are, they should be able to do something about the selection of principals and so on, because there are some uh, schools that simply don't work. And uh, separate is, you know, very soft, <laughs> soft policy measure. So some people would argue that uh, the middle tier should have some stronger, uh, you know, tasks. Okay, so this is one, of one question. Another question is whether middle tier should be the part of state administration. It's a, again, it's, there is a strongly divided <laughs> discussion. One would, one would argue that it should be part of the state administration, sort of ministry, deconcentrated ministry in the regions, and some would argue that it should be you know, really autonomous, autonomous institution in the region. Again, there are two camps on this. <laughs> And what I think is quite uh, unhappy is that uh, these both camps are, you know, introducing two different pilots. I was saying about a ministerial pilot, but there is one uh, more pilot on uh, military, interaction of military in the country that is realized by NGOs. So I think not, <laughs> I'm not that happy about the situation because uh, obviously the schools are puzzled. <laughs> okay, you are from the ministry or you are from the NGOs and uh, so definitely it's, it's, I don't think it's not a good uh, you know, situation. And definitely there is a discussion debate uh, about the task that the military should fulfill. How many tasks and what exact tasks. What I know from the terrain, there is uh, agreement and consensus that uh, the legal advice, for instance, uh, should be one of the you know, <laughs> uh, the cornerstones of the, of, the, of the hell because uh, nobody you know, can challenge that this, that this is something that the state should do really to provide. I mean, by legal advice, I mean translated, translated legal advice. It's not sending some <laughs> you know, new instruction for school uh, principals, but really explaining what it means for their work and really you know, how they implement the new legislation and so on. And as, as I said, well, so far in many cases it was done not by the state, not by the municipalities, not by the military, but was private organization that made a bit profit on just simply, you know, uh, analyzing, interpreting uh, for individual schools. So, 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 for instance, this is uh, one thing that uh, there is uh, agreement about. But uh, there are many other questions. Better, what about communication, how, how it should communicate with the schools, uh, and also what technical capacities and tasks uh, it should fulfill, and so on. Okay, to conclude, uh, pros and cons of military interaction. Uh, as for pros, uh, uh, I think that uh, the middle link is in the system is quite missing, and uh, there is agreement. And in all systems, uh, in all effective systems, there is something like military. Uh, it can have different names, different labels, different functions, but we all know there is something between the schools and, uh, and the center. The center is too far. Ministry in Prague is too far from the small school in somewhere in Moravia, in North Bohemia, so on Moravia. So definitely there is something missing. But the question is, that, uh, but how we can build uh, the link? Uh, and also the cons, uh, the against, uh, the plant idea is that uh, if it's badly implemented, it can uh, actually impose burden, more burden than help. And we have some <laughs> bad experience in many policy, uh, policy fiascos in many different ideas, in many different, different policy domains. That uh, to create the structure, as I said, uh, it's not a goal, it's a mean. So it can happen that we will build a structure. But if we fulfill the structure with uh, not experienced people, with bureaucratic people, so it won't work, definitely. Uh, it's crucially dependent upon trust, but also it's crucially dependent upon resources. And uh, there, is not, there is a risk that there will not be enough qualified staff 
and also the risk that the best qualified people will leave the schools actually. <laughs> so it's not a small risk, although if we need say a few hundreds of very experienced principals uh, to move to middle layer, well they will be missing schools. Although we have, you know, <laughs> we have quite a few principals, but still if you get uh, quite a few hundreds of them, so they will be missed because they, are, they don't serve not only to their schools, but also to the community. So there's also one of the risks we are experiencing. Okay, to conclude, uh, I would call myself as a hesitant or reluctant advocate of middle tier, uh, but I think that it's a very, uh, it's an idea that has a merit. I believe uh, definitely this is something that we will see in the following few, re few years, and it will definitely shape the educational policy, not only here in the Czech Republic, but also probably in many other countries. So thank you very much for your attention and I look, I open the discussion for your very interesting, definitely very, probably very interesting question and comment. Thank you very much. I don't know, Milan, how would you like to proceed? <laughs> or should I? Yeah, yeah. Perhaps on mic, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, my question is just, what do the schools want from this middle tier? Mm -hmm. I can understand they would be looking for some support, perhaps, as you say, with legality. I can understand there might be some shared support in terms of financial advice. Mm -hmm. But what are they actually asking for? Because that's what we need to start with, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What do they need that role to be? Otherwise, as you say, it does become a burden rather than support? Okay, great question. Uh, I will answer it immediately. Uh, it really depends. <laughs> the problem is that it really depends. Some schools uh, really uh, call for very technical help, uh, even in IT, in financial, uh, but some of them really call for educational support. But uh, uh, I think that in general what I heard is that uh, they, are not, they don't want so much some educational support uh, because they think that they are experts in it. So, although it doesn't have to be always the case, <laughs> they think that it's uh, their own realm to be, you know, uh, they are supposed to be you know, experts on educational. So, they are, I know, that's what I, what I heard, but they definitely, and also what I heard that uh, sometimes uh, the people working in the pilot realize that something is not working in the school, but the school itself or the school principal is not realizing the need. For instance, they are using very old IT system that is not functioning and spend, the principal spends a lot of time, you know, going with some, you know, un, not, not functioning Excel or whatever, and uh, she, the principal, uh, is not, she or he is not able, you know, to understand that uh, the needs. But, uh, yeah, we should start with the, with the needs, how the principals, how the schools see them. Uh, and as I said, as far as I know, but I can be a bit biased or mistaken, uh, is that uh, they very often call more for the more technical advice and about legal, technical things, uh, very practical things, not so much about educational. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, if you're drawing on then people who've been head teachers, mm -hmm. that might not be the best recruitment mm -hmm, pool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah, again, good, good remark. I think that the, the team uh, from the pilot uh, consists of uh, people from different backgrounds, not only principals, but also from people of, you know, that are able to provide some more technical help, or economists, sociologists, and so on. So it's not, they are not only you know, school principals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is the second time in 24 hours that I've had a deja vu feeling. Um, this time, when you were talking about the middle tire, uh, I think I realized that um, we were the ones that made the background survey for Finland for the Czech middle tire international background research that you had, if I've understood right. It was a PAQ agency. There was a set of questions, 17 main questions on how the education governance is working and I think there's a second phase going on and parallel to this uh, I've understood that you are working with 
renewing um, educational leadership, education in general. And, and if that was behind with what you were telling, you, you're doing very wonderful and thorough work. Thank you for that. Our report was 26 pages, 36 pages in fact. And if you've received similar reports from other countries, um, you, you really have a lot of data. And uh, the instructions that we were giving uh, were about a very fragmented system with a lot of centralization in it. And you are trying to make order or, or make it work well. Yesterday, uh, the Enirdelm network took us to the gymnasium na Zatlans here in Prague. My pronunciation in Czech is as poor as you heard. But it was a wonderful school and a wonderful principal. And there too I remembered uh, our role in, in, your, in your research. So I had questions like uh, what the principal would think mm. that it would have to be. And she had in fact two points of messages. Uh, first one was that to have autonomy. And it appeared that they have it. Mm -hmm. And then that the structures are not that important in fact, but the dialogue should be well functioning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your wonderful presentation. Yeah, thank you very much for your remark. It was, I think it was more remark than a question. Yeah, uh, as for autonomy, I think that the, there is always pros and cons on all policy, you know, measures all policy means. And I think that the one positive uh, side about the great autonomy and growth decentralization in, in the country is that uh, some principles really were able to use the autonomy to the best. They really, some, we have some excellent principles, many excellent principles that were really, but they were really exceptional and they, they use the extra autonomy. I'm sometimes, when, I, when we were preparing the strategy, I was sometimes saying that there are schools that uh, don't need any central strategy. <laughs> and I'm aware of many schools that have some excellent principles. They don't need any you know, curriculum, any central curriculum, any, any support because they are so capable. They are able to you know, create you know, ex external contacts to private uh, organization, non-NGOs and so on. But how many such principles and how many such schools we have in the system, especially if we have so many schools in the system. So yeah, I agree. The problem is that we should create a system that uh, on the one hand is supporting the principles that need a support, but is not you know, placing some new burden on the principles that doesn't need, well, or needs very little actually. Especially after 20 years of experience, uh, when everything is set in the region and they are able to, you know, to deal with the technical things very quickly and efficiently. They have, you know, some vice principles for everything. So it, it can work. So I agree with you. Thanks, good comment. Thank you. Hello, I am from Pilsen, from a secondary school, and I'd like to ask how uh, well, the support from middle tier would look like uh, or whether they count with a systemic solution. And I would also like to know how you cooperate with the founding authority and how you cooperate with the founding authority on long-term plans, whether you are present in platform where the educational policy is created at the regional level. And I would also like to say that uh, secondary school Nazatlas is uh, an extraordinary school and we cannot refer to it uh, uh, as a general measure. It is uh, really exceptional in the Czech environment. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as for secondary schools in the Czech Republic, uh, first, uh, the, the military is the, at least the pilot is focusing on kindergartens and basic schools. So not on secondary schools like gymnasiums. So uh, because uh, the problem with the secondary schools is uh, different. The issues with secondary schools are different than from uh, the basic schools. Uh, because secondary schools are founded by regions. 
So uh, they are in different, and we have 14 regions. So they are in, and regions are able to create some support, support for the for the for their uh, secondary schools because regions are relatively big, <laughs> and they have relatively few secondary schools. So, so the portion uh, between between the number of the founders and the size of the of the founder and uh, and the number of schools is quite different from the basic school. So the pilot uh, is focusing upon uh, upon on basic schools, not uh, and kindergarten, not on secondary schools. Uh, as for the founders and as for the regions, uh, uh, it's uh, it's not about the pilot, but uh, we know again that the uh, the understanding of regions and the, and they you know stance to education is we have a we don't have one education in the system. We have a, sometimes we are saying we have four. 14 uh, different systems because we have 14 uh, regions and uh, each region is you know creating quite different uh, approach to education especially in terms of support especially because you will find a region that really are you know forming and uh, constructing big uh, school offices uh, uh, with a number of staff and trying really to help the the, the schools but uh, not all regions and they, they definitely differ so again, it's it's a it's a problem, and I I can only agree with the access to to the sources. That uh, it's a big issue. That uh, some schools are really able to ensure that they have quite a few resources, uh, but uh, it's well, it can it can differ for for some other schools. So that are not so not, they are not so happy. So yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you very much uh, for your uh, inspiring presentation. Uh, my name is Tibor Brata. I came from Hungary, having some uh, experience uh, in the very much decentralized and after uh, strongly uh, centralized system. Mm -hmm. My questions. Um, you mentioned that the implementation of the uh, MT is a very crucial uh, point. Uh, how do you plan it? Um, make a little bit deeper. Uh, how, uh, how can you use uh, the experiences of the uh, piloting procedure to establish a sophistical uh, implementation uh, uh, process? And uh, what roles can schools and school leaders have uh, in this planning process? How they can support mm -hmm. uh, to, to establish a really uh, well-world uh, system? Thank you. Thank you too. First of all, I'm not planning. I'm not a member of ministry, so <laughs> fortunately, enough, I'm not. I'm not playing. I'm not. I'm not uh, deciding what will what will happen. So actually, I don't know. I don't have the you know the most the recent uh, you know ideas about how they plan it. But uh, the idea is definitely uh, to start. It depends on the resources because. Uh, well, the implementation uh, is supposed to be based on the EU resources. It's one restraint, as we all know, <laughs> because there are some special you know, conditions and limitation of uh, EU funds. But it's supposed to be, you know, uh, you know, supported by this uh, structural fund, EU. Uh, but uh, what will happen in the in the recent years? Well, is not known, especially because the highest big restraint, as far as I know, is the number of people in public administration. So, and, and also your point, if I got you correctly, is what uh, what's the role of schools? How they how they can what what can, what they well. Uh, I'm not concerned so much concerned about the schools in the piloted regions because I think that they are really. If I saw some communication, some numbers of communications, and they communicate daily with the pilot, with the people from the ministry. But I'm not sure how the other principals from the other regions uh, will able will be able really to influence what will happen, what will be planned. So definitely, I think, and uh, the one possible risk is that two regions uh, do not represent. Uh, uh, the other regions in the whole in the whole country. So I, I think in my it is my understanding that the minister plans to you know to take the experience from the pilot from these two two regions and take it as a representative for, for the whole country, because they really get a lot of lot of uh, experience and I think they can build on this. But you are right that uh, and also I agree with you that I also am saying to the minister that uh, that it can quite happen that there are many different regions that have even even quite uh, even more different needs uh, than uh, what uh, they have uh, found in the pilot. So, yeah, so, so it's good advice to the minister really to, to, get, to get some even more some input for schools in our regions.
And uh, can you imagine that uh, uh, schools from different regions, mm -hmm. not only the piloted uh, uh, ones, uh, can can be invited to uh, to take part in the uh, process of uh, uh, planning? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Let me also ask a small question. Uh, since mid-90s, we were trying to establish um, school governing bodies as entities that might perhaps help schools to kind of uh, uh, live in the wild world. Uh, would you still see, I mean, it was not successful um, in a number of aspects, mm -hmm. but there are some remains of it still in the system. Would you still see any potential of school governing bodies in the whole setup? Well, definitely. And it relates to the question how it will be organized. As I said, there are two uh, contradictory understandings of the middle tier. One is that it will be part of public administration, state administration, and then, frankly, I don't see much, uh, much minor role uh, of uh, school uh, governing bodies than in the other conceptions developed by NGOs where the middle tier is supposed to be uh, you know the set of actors in the given region so but definitely as far as I know the people that are currently preparing the pilot they are very open and definitely they try to you know cooperate with all the bodies in the regions because they are quite aware that without you know taking all the <laughs> important you know actors in the region it won't work definitely but as I said uh, frankly I think that uh, if, if uh, the military will be more sort of public administration, state administration, so definitely it will be forced to follow more the more <laughs> centralized understanding what it is then, uh, yeah. Uh, Vesna Kovac uh, from Croatia. First of all, thank you for your marvelous presentation. It was really interesting to, to listen to it, and it was also a provocative. I will just make a few points as a researcher. I'm also not a politician, but researcher of education policy. First of all, I would like to say what, what is bothering me. It's actually in Croatia, and probably also in many other countries, is very difficult uh, to, to make a picture of uh, middle tier actors. It's really difficult and complex, both vertical and horizontal, to understand who is who, who is responsible for what, and how successful or unsuccessful is for doing what it is supposed to do. This is maybe first remark. Um, the second one, maybe specific for Croatia, but I'm really wondering how is in Czech or in other countries, but in Croatia I noticed that stories about successful and unsuccessful local communities or local governments became very often noticed in media. So we have sort of impression as a readers or con consumers of media, impression which local authority is more successful, more friendly for schools in their surroundings, and which one are less. And when we think, this is my last point, about is it any secret which local govern governance is more successful? It, ca it can be maybe about relationship between school principals and local community, and lo uh, principals has to articular, articulate clearly what do they need from local community to support schools, and local community has to have been uh, responsible to its needs. So I would like to hear some comments about mm. it from you, if possible. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, it's very interesting remarks and comments. Uh, well, as for the remark concerning the number of actors in regions, I can only agree. And uh, as I said, in the system, a very decentralized system with a high autonomy, when actually the state left 
left the region. <laughs> so it, you know, it allowed many local actors to play a role. So in many regions, we have a quite, you know, very dense networks of uh, networks, uh, NGOs, and, and also private organizations that are playing in our decentralized system, quite, play quite an important role. And in many, so I, and it's also, it has both advantages and disadvantages. And uh, in terms of, for researchers, it's a disadvantage because we are not able to, you know, for us to, to see for on the first side who is, you know, really the important actor in, in the region. But on the other hand, I think for the community, it's a good sign that really a number of, uh, you know, actors play a role in, in many regions. But so, so this is common, I agree definitely on this. On the second point, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, yeah, about the about success. Uh, well, the problem is, what's the success? What's the criteria of success? Uh, I think that we, we can have quite different criteria for, for success uh, for, for regions. Uh, in our country, we don't have uh, uh, standardized uh, testing across uh, regions uh, and uh, the whole country, so we don't have data. We cannot compare regions. We have some other you know, data that we can we can use, uh, but still we, c we don't have a reliable data. But and our, of, of course, uh, the question is whether you know the student achievement uh, is the uh, you know the <laughs> the indicator of success. <laughs> definitely, it's perhaps it's one of the indicator, but definitely not not the only one. And it can be, in my understanding, that uh, in some regions, uh, I would call them successful if they are really able. Uh, to motivate and to help that uh, all schools are able to participate and all schools are more or less good, you know. So, uh, so this is another indicator or criterion of success uh, and we know that uh, from practice that uh, in some regions we have some excellent schools like Zatlanza and many others uh, that are really excellent but uh, is it really success if you have some real excellent, uh, excellent schools but then you have uh, some you know very problematic schools in the regions but you know on average it can be you know success but uh, what is success so so it is is a question how you how you will understand uh, how we will understand the success and it can go to different directions uh, but uh, but we don't know we don't know and as for the media i would disagree on this point uh, but it's my only personal limited uh, <laughs> uh, experience so i'm not saying this uh, I don't think that uh, in media uh, the best schools and the best principles are presented. Always. I, I don't think that it's always the case. I think that we have uh, quite a good, uh, very good schools, very good principles that, are, that have never been to media. And I know quite a few principles that are very often in media. And they are leading good schools. I'm not saying this against this, but uh, I'm not sure that uh, they are leading the excellent schools. So I don't think that there is a, <laughs> I would not, uh, I'm not saying that you are saying this, but uh, I think I would be more cautious about, you know, uh, about principles in media and schools in media. Uh, and I don't think that uh, it does doesn't necessarily mean that if the schools are in media that they are successful and they are good, at least in, in our region. Uh, I actually meant that local, that, that representatives of local authority was in media mm -hmm. and stories about mm -hmm. them and how do they support schools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not aware of any, no, <laughs> of any, because uh, as I said, uh, the local authorities is so small we usually have small municipalities, so they are uh, responsible for so many domains, not only for schools. So, well, very, very few persons are, you know, th think that they are responsible for education and, and go to media that they are experts in, because most of them, definitely, majority of them don't know anything about education, education policy. Yeah, I'm afraid we are a little bit running out of time, so uh, time for last question. Hello, uh, I would like to share my experience with communication with middle layer in the Czech Republic. Maybe it will be useful for you. <laughs> I am a head of uh, elementary school in the Czech Republic. And it was two days ago, actually. <laughs> so it's uh, uh, really funny. Um, I needed help uh, about a school code in the Czech Republic, how, how to explain something there. And uh, I asked the layer through uh, email, and what I appreciated, it was a very brief answer in a few minutes, maybe, or 10, 20 minutes. 
and as a leader of the school, I appreciate this most. Because it was very fast, it was concrete, and it is what uh, I think that uh, the directors of school need, uh, concrete and very fast help. That's Thank you, and you are not from the piloted regions, I guess. Uh, no, I am from yeah. uh, Middle uh, Czech region. Yeah, yeah, I should say that yeah. also it works also for some other schools. It's also answer to other to your question that, uh, as far as I know, there is an email, general email that all you know schools and principals can respond. So I'm happy to hear that even they respond even to <laughs> schools that are outside yeah. their yeah. regions. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I, I think that it's very necessary to uh, that all directors of Czech schools know where and how they can. They, then, they can contact middle attire because I found this information on Facebook pages <laughs> and uh, I find it very useful. So they are reachable on Facebook and also through emails. So it's really great work, I think. Thank you. Thank you too. <clears throat> yes, uh, dear colleagues, uh, I'm really sorry. Time is running so fast since uh, I think it was very inspiring and interesting uh, presentation from Arnošt. I would like to thank him very much for his uh, contribution to our conference. Thank you, Arnošt, once, once again. Thank you. Thank you.